Greetings, unsettled souls, <clears throat> and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangi reporting for The Media Speaks. Um, oh, and I'm gonna, I guess I should mention this. Uh, I will be at the Arcadia Grill on a signature bomb that is going to be going on uh, November the 2nd. So it's right up on top of it. There's going to be a K McKinley Maslin game there. I'm going to attempt an Ohio House run. I'm trying to get the nomination uh, for the Libertarian Party. And I need all the, uh, anybody in Stark County and in, uh, in my District 49, please do me a favor and head to the Arcadia Grill on November 2nd and help me get this done. Friends, I'm going to go on to um, ynetnews.com. This is why I've, I've said repeatedly that we needed to watch the over-glorification of that dolt. Because... Just because, I should say, Russia is on the right side of history in this uh, Edward Snowden affair does not mean that Russia is by any stretch of the imagination uh, making the world a better place. Report Russia to offer Iran S-300 missiles and a new nuclear reactor. Giving a nuclear reactor to Iran is like giving a hand grenade to an infant. Stupid idea. First of all, it's seismically active. Second of all, they've already proven that the way they handle nuclear uh, material is begging for a disaster. And it, it is obviously going to be a target. Nobody should have any nuclear reactors, but nobody should have one less than them. I don't care how unpopular it is that they said it. It's going to be another Fukushima. And I've got news on that coming. Russia will offer Iran a new supply of S-300 missiles and assistance in the construction of an additional nuclear reactor in Bashur. Russian paper uh, Common Sun reported Wednesday. Yeah, Mayvek worked out really well for you, Russia. Chernobyl, another good one. How about how many submarines have you sunk to the bottom of the ocean? You're, you're, you're an expert on all things nuclear. The proposal comes three years after a previous agreement under which Russia was expected to transfer five S-300 batteries to Iran was canceled. A week and a half ago, Russian President Vladimir Putin confirmed in an interview for AP that Moscow supplied Syria with computers for the system, but that the shipment was not completed. It goes on, according to a source within the Kremlin, Putin decided to grant an Iranian request to supply the Islamic Republic Republic, yeah, nice name, with the high-end S-300 air defense system with a deal estimated at $800 million, which will also include coordinating the construction of an additional nuclear reactor in Bashur. The only thing they're going to do here is uh, create a unmitigated nuclear disaster in Iran. Mark my words, this is a disaster unfolding before your very eyes. Alexei Pushkov, the Kremlin-connected chief of the Foreign Affairs Committee in the lower house of parliament, told lawmakers that Moscow hopes that the U.S. will back Russia's proposal for Syria to put its chemical weapons under international control for their subsequent dismantling. Um, basically, Russia's trying to... Um, trying to grandstand, trying to do what China's doing, and just because America's going down the tubes, <clears throat> and it is, um, these, these tin horn dictators think that they're somehow going to step up, and all they're going to end up doing is really ridiculous things like causing nuclear meltdowns to occur. The news came amid reports of a renewed bid to restart international peace talks regarding Iran's nuclear program. I don't care if they're not trying to build a bomb with it, and I do think that their intent is to make a dirty bomb with it. I very much believe that. Even if it's not, <clears throat> they've already hidden nuclear leaks there. They are incompetent at handling nuclear elements. This, this is such a mess. And <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know what it's going to take for the world to get away from this reliance on nuclear. For one thing, man-made global warming is a lie. For another thing, even if it wasn't, the way to go is not nuclear. Why? Well, let's go to this. JapanTimes.co.jp 
Water radiation soars at Fukushima number one. Radiation levels in groundwater under Tokyo Electric Power Company's Fukushima 1 reactor plant are soaring, TEPCO said Friday after taking samples from an observation well. Now, for those of you that watch my show now and again, you're like, oh, he already reported on this. No. Every time I talk about the radiation water leak, it is almost always a separate leak. It is not the one that was reported on prior. TEPCO said 400,000 becquerels per liter of beta ray emitting substances such as strontium were detected in water sample Thursday from the well located some 15 meters from a storage tank that leaked about 300 tons of highly radioactive water in August. And it, it's, it's leaking 300 tons of radioactive water into the ocean every single day. The level of becquerels, a record high for water in that well, was up 6,500 6, fold from the 61 becquerels found Wednesday. TEPCO was planning to pump groundwater up from different wells about 100 meters from the leaky tank for release into the Pacific Ocean before the water flows into the damaged reactor buildings and becomes heavily contaminated with radioactive materials. Now, before I go on, this nuclear uh, reactors, or the nuclear reactors that are melting down over there, made by General Electric. Maintained, obviously, by TEPCO. My point being, as highly advanced as Japan and America is, we cannot prevent these kinds of things from going on. Forget about sabotage. Forget about warfare. Forget about suicide bombers and dirty bomb makers and all of that. From a technical, technological standpoint, is anybody watching this thinking that Iran is going to do any better? You believe that Iran is going to do a better job of running a nuclear reactor than the U.S.? Oh, well, let's remember Three Mile Island over here. Better, be, better than Japan and Fukushima. But Iran's smarter than both of those countries. They're ready for a nuclear reactor in a war zone! And ditto on Israel, too. Although Israel is a little more technologically advanced than Iran. TEPCO was planning to pump... Oh, I read that already. But the plan appears in jeopardy because the sharp increase in the levels of radioactive materials in the observation well suggests the radioactive groundwater is spreading. By law, water containing beta <coughs> particle emitting substances exceeding certain levels cannot be released into the sea. The upper limit is set at 30 becquerels per liter of strontium, 90 and 60 becquerels of cesium-134. <clears throat> those numbers, by the way, those are not safe. That's just where you know, you're not going to immediately drop dead by being around it. Immediately being the key word there. TEPCO also said water collected Thursday from the drainage ditch near the leaky tank contained 34,000 becquerels of beta particle emitting substances per liter compared with 2,300 becquerels the day before. Again, a becquerel is one reaction, one explosion in your body, uh, microscopic level, of course, and uh, each one of those can lead to cancer. It is believed some 400 tons of radioactive groundwater is flowing into the Pacific daily. Oh, great, I was, uh, it's, it's worse than I thought to quote Alex Jones. Officials said Thursday they will solicit proposals from both domestic and overseas nuclear experts and firms on how best to scrap the ruined reactors at Fuku number one. Friends, let me tell you something, and this can't be overstated. They, they, they they're, right, I'm going to use the cigarette analogy that, uh, that I read, and I'm going to be doing it, uh, my, um, I do a monthly massive Fukushima update, and it's the 29th, so it's going to be coming. Uh, so more on this then, but I'll give you a heads up. Uh, imagine a packet of cigarettes. You can pull one cigarette out at a time. Although if it's smashed or dented, then it might not. They might catch. They're going to try to remove the nuclear fuel from Unit 4 starting in like two weeks. If one of those cigarettes, fuel rods, touch each other, boom! And it's, it's much worse than the combined... It's like... 1,400 times worse than the Hiroshima bomb or something. So what they got over here is a mess. And uh, tying it into my first story, I, this is what Iran wants to bring into their country. Last of the nuke news here. 
Michael Savage launches investigation into missing news. Uh, God bless Michael Savage. Uh, he's a little more socially conservative, obviously, than I am. But I used to listen to him every day when I drove taxi. And he, you know what, he, he's a good, good man, I'll tell you that. Radio host calls for media attention over missing nuke report and termination of top nuke commanders. Basically, people, um, correct me if I'm wrong, when you're done hearing me read this, it sounds like America, or certain factions in the American government, were contemplating, at the very least, creating a false flag event, letting one of our nukes go off and blaming it on the enemy. And certain nukes are missing, and generals that protested it have been fired. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are you are they just like, we're ticking on your phone. Listen, it looks like people in our government t were contemplating setting off a nuclear bomb in a populated American city to blame it on our enemies. Since Alex Jones and I originally reported on the high-level military intelligence revealing that an unsigned nuclear weapons transfer had taken place back on September the 3rd, an absurdly high number of red flag events lending credibility to the intel have followed. From the termination of the second highest nuke commander in the country on the exact same day as the leak, Senator Lindsey Graham warning of a nuclear strike on the exact destination of the missile transfer, the red alert scenarios continue to pile up. Conspiracy, right? Can you ask too many questions when you're dealing with something like this? I don't think so. Now Michael Savage of the Savage Nation is launching an investigation into the issue and calling upon the media to properly address the situation. Um, he keeps saying I, which you're not supposed to do in an article, but it's Anthony Gucciardi, and he can do whatever he wants to do. I joined the Savage Nation to discuss the intel timeline of the nuke transfer, specifically highlighting the fact that the transfer was unsigned for and completely off of books. Originally covered by Savage earlier this month, following the suspension and termination of two top nuke commanders in the nation, the missing nuke intel has since spread internationally. And still, the United States media has failed to even mention it, despite the vital events that continue to point towards its accuracy. I'm going to read the last of it here in a minute, but for those of you that know, I, I'm, I'm a big student of history, and I have a very, very big interest in World War II. There were times in, uh, during the Second World War that Germany was getting annihilated, and Germany was doing all kinds of really rotten things to its own people. And the people in Germany didn't know anything about it, but the rest of the world did. Stalin did the same thing. Mao, Mao made an entire career, it's all Mao did. Um, my point being, again, nations that do this have not been on the right side of history. And now we're doing it. But the fact is nothing new, considering the reality that even the local media was quick to ignore sources revealing the unsigned transfer to them. As usual, the mainstream media is definitely afraid of crossing the establishment. After all, it's who grants them their reach, and oftentimes funding. The brief report from the top-level military source, which was written in a rush to get the information out, reads, Dyrus is beginning to, mo to move out nuclear warheads today. I got a tap from Dermo earlier. <clears throat> he said it was the first time they have been even acknowledged since being put there in the 1980s. No signature was required for transfer, and there was no directive. He said that Dyer's commander was on site to give authority to release. No one knew where they were going, really, but the truck driver said to take them to South Carolina and another to pick them up from there. And uh, if for any reason that doesn't alarm you, then that's because there really is something wrong with the thinking part of your brain. I don't want to call that up yet, but that's okay. We're going to get to that story soon. I was going to call up Bud K, but forget it, I'm just going to advertise him. Guys, go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on the Bud K ad. When you do, you will not only get the ama some of the amazing uh, merchandise I'm going to be telling you about, but you're going to be helping The Media Speaks. You're going to help us a lot. But you've got to go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and click on Bud K. Do it in that order so that they know that you came from our site. 
it's how we keep the operation going. I mean, we, we don't make a fortune at it, but they've got good merchandise. We support that. They support us. And, you know, you might want to see this stuff. It's really good stuff. Check this out. The $5 wallet savers. I've just been addicted to this. <clears throat> this is really quality gifts for, that are practically giving the stuff away. Listen to this. The 11 function credit card survival tool, $1.99. They've got the th three LED Dynamo hand crank flashlight, $2.99. How many times have you reached for a flashlight the damn thing doesn't work? It happens to me every single time. $2.99, hand crank light, never have to worry about it again. No batteries leaking, no corrosive garbage uh, spilling out of the container. Those days are gone. Oh, what's the last thing I want to mention? The Dragon Biker Motorcycle Fantasy Pocket Knife. $4.99. Now, if you have tons of money this Christmas and you just want to throw it away, by all means, throw it away. If you would like to be frugal and still get amazing gifts for people, then go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, click on Bud K, click on the $5 wallet savers. Friends, i got a few more stories to get to. I'll call this back up again. And this delicious picture. I mean, if this doesn't make you want to have a meal, then I don't, I don't know. I mean, this, this is what nutrition looks like. Ah, oh, some nice bugs. There we go. Sam, why are you making us look at bugs? Incoming. ABC News, flower made from insects will feed underfed populations. Now, I'm not completely against this. I mean, uh, John the Baptist uh, reportedly lived mostly off of uh, locusts and wild honey. I know that there are lots of protein in bugs. And uh, many, many countries eat bugs on a regular basis. I don't care about that. I care about their motives because this is all part of the cows fart and make global warming worse. This is part of a move towards a green agenda, which I do not support. Because again, man-made man -made global warming is a lie. If it's labeled and people know what they're eating, I don't, I personally don't care. I really, as long as it's labeled, as long as it is labeled, I don't have a problem with it. Chew on this. A team of MBA students were the recipients of the 2013 Holt Prize earlier this week, providing them with $1 million in seed money to produce an insect-based protein-rich flour for feeding malnourished populations in other countries. The product is called Power Flower. <clears throat> it's a huge deal because we had a very ambitious but highly executable five-year plan in place, said the team captain, Mohamed Ashour, whose team hails from McGill University of Montreal. So winning this prize is a great step in that direction. Again, <clears throat> when I say the greeny thing, I mean the way the establishment's going to spin it, not necessarily these people. Um, Ashour, along with teammates... Uh, Shabhida Soar, Jesse Perlstein, Zev Thompson, and Gabe Mott will be immediately working with an advisory board to recruit farmers and workers to Mexico, where a population of roughly 4 million live in slum conditions with widespread malnutrition. We will be starting with grasshoppers, I sure said. He noted that the insect is already familiar with the local diet and currently sells for a premium because of the three-month harvesting season and because grasshoppers are typically hand-picked. But farmers have already expressed interest in raising grasshoppers on a mass level, according to Assure. And it sounds like you pick them off a tree the way they were then on the ABC. While for Americans, the idea of eating bugs remains mostly a novelty, in other areas of the world they are common forms of protein. The kinds of insects people consume from country to country varies. Uh, people of Ghana prefer palm weevils. Mmm. In Botswana, they like caterpillars. The power flower product will vary ingredients according to those habits, adjusting production to the breeding cycles and nutritional profile. I don't know. I mean, it is what it is. I, I wonder what the back motive is, again. But in and of itself, I don't know. It seemed like such an odd story that I wanted to cover it. I'll be interested to see if I get any comments uh, Comments on that. It, did, did it make anybody hungry? If it did, I... And D Lake will be like, it made me hungry. Alright. Um, UndergroundHealth.com. Man diagnosed as comatose for 23 years was actually fully conscious but paralyzed. This is one of the most terrifying stories you will ever hear. 
Imagine being stuck in your bed, unconscious but unable to speak or move, for a quarter of your life, while everyone around you thought you were just a comatose, quote, vegetable. Again, they murdered Terry Schiavo, and this is more proof that they did. Uh, again, it was minor differences in that case, but it came to mind. This is what happened to 50-year-old Rama Halman of Belgium, who back in 06, and later reported in 09, was discovered to have actually been fully conscious, just paralyzed, for all these years, following a near-fatal near car accident that he suffered back in 1983. I was 10. In one of the most nightmarish thoughts imaginable, being stuck in a lifeless body but unable to communicate with anyone for a full 23 straight years. Somehow Hoban was able to survive this unimaginable experience that shatters much of what the medical system thought that it knew about brain damage and being unconscious. The entire coma diagnosis process, as we currently know it in fact, is now in question as many more allegedly comatose individuals out there could actually be fully conscious and aware of their surroundings. I would love to know if he did, in fact, stay sane. How did he stay sane? I mean, <coughs> people, 1983. According to UK's Guardian, Harbin was essentially been a prisoner of his own body since the early 80s, unable to communicate with nurses, family, and others who continually tried to communicate with him. It was not until 06, when a new state-of-the-art PET scanning system came onto the scene, that Holman's caretakers came to realize the error of their assumptions. Holman had all along been able to hear and understand life, as it was taking place around his otherwise lifeless body. I screamed, but there was nothing to hear, said Holman via a special keyboard that was made for him following the discovery. I traveled with my thoughts into the past or into another experience altogether. I was only my conscious, it was only my consciousness and nothing else, added the former engineering student who speaks four different languages about how he coped with his vegetative life. Recalling the day that his caretakers first discovered that he had been fully conscious all those years, Hoban says it felt like a second birth, as it quite obviously changed the course of his entire existence in a major way. All the anger, powerlessness, and despair that Holman felt all those years, which he says he soothed away through meditation and other desperate means, was gone in an instant. I don't know how you can meditate that well, but thank God he could. Nearly half of all individuals currently diagnosed as comatose could be awake. You got a loved one that's comatose? Go talk to them. Let them know that you know this. See? Even, even if, even if uh, you can't immediately do anything about it, let them know that you know this. It'll be the world to them. Imagine being them. That's why I'm reporting on it! Not long after the man credited with discovering the truth about Hogan's condition, neurologist Stephen Lowry's conducted a follow-up study that aimed to find out how prevalent false coma diagnoses truly are. Much to his surprise, this expert from the University of Liege found that as many as 40% of all people currently diagnosed as being in a comatose or otherwise vegetative state are more than likely fully conscious but unable to communicate just like Holman was. If one person listens to me, it's an epic fail. If a lot of you listen to me, you pass this around. If, if I can get some people who are in comas to, to have them know that their loved ones, 40% chance here, are going to actually be conscious and know what's going on, if I could help these people out of that hell that I did my job today, I, I, will, I will go to sleep a happy man. Comatose patients are misdiagnosed on a disturbingly regular basis. That makes you feel great, doesn't it? Lorries is quoted as saying to Germany's Der Spiegel, a news source, well, once someone is labeled as being without consciousness, it is very hard to get rid of that, he added. Yeah, asked Terry Schiavo. Noting that of the 44 patients he examined that were believed to be in a vegetative state, only 26 of them actually were. Uh, the incredible findings, which were published in the peer-reviewed journal BMC Neurology, are a major game-changer with regards to how the medical profession makes coma diagnoses. Thank God! It also raises new questions as to the morality of pulling the plug on those diagnosed as being hopelessly vegetative, as many of them are, just like Hogan, could be anything but. And again, uh, when uh, my father passed, uh, they could have kept him alive, but they said that he was most likely brain dead. Uh, my, my brother was there, I was at work, but we'd already decided as a family that we were going to pull the plug. But you got to remember, he had stage 4 liver cancer, too. 
we're not talking about somebody who was going to very likely do that. Well, let's face it, okay, that, that's that's night and day from this. So there you go. Last story I'm going to go to. I told you I was not going to be able to get to all the dots caps I have this month. Uh, and again, that's. So 29th, mere, mere days, I'll be doing the dunce cap of the month. Um, I usually do the, the dunce cap and then all the runners up. People, there are so many dummies this month that that's impossible. I have literally, oh look, there's my Bud K picture. Halloween special. There are so many dummies that it would be absolutely impossible for me to get to them all in one story without that installment of the show being like, 90 hours long. So I got my picture of it in my outhouse up, and I'm going to let you know right here who one of the runners up for the Dutz Cap of the Month award is. Now keep in mind, the dumb winner is still dumber than even this. CNSnews.com open for business government to erect $98,670 outhouse. And why is America backpedaling? The Federal Bureau of Land Management, BLM, recently paid $98,670 for the purchase and installation of an outhouse at the Swede Trail Park Head in Alaska. You can say what you want about Sarah Palin. Again, uh, she's not the world's greatest politician, but she was right about the waste. And uh, again, and now that she's gone, uh, off, off it goes. Um, do I think she should be president? No. But I think she did a good job as the governor of Alaska. A good job, not a great job, but that's because she's a good politician and she's not a libertarian, which would have made her great. The purchase includes a single vault Romtech 1011 Aspen single prefabricated waterless toilet and its installation at the parking area for the trailhead. KG Moshevik of the BL BLM tells CNSnews.com almost half of it, contract expenses, is for the cost of the toilet. The Oregon-based company, Romtech, lists the Aspen single model on its website for as low as $9,999. But BLM says the price they paid likely includes shipping to Alaska. What they do, walk it on someone's back? At the cost of all the materials that will have to be taken to the site, there will be earthwork that will have to be done. On September 20th, the contract to install the toilet was awarded to Big Street Construction Incorporated of North Pole, Alaska. The BLM tells CNSnews.com the construction company is located about three hours from the installation site. In other words, it's not traveling to Alaska. They just debunked that. So where did all that money, from $9,000 to, what did they read that was it? To, from $9,999 to $98,000 when the company building it and putting it together is only three hours away! When we're talking about this trailhead, you turn off this highway, it's a Denali Highway, onto an unpaved area. You drive in maybe a quarter of a mile, I would consider it to be remote. It's a remote toilet! The BLM says that Sweet Park Trailhead is a popular location and up to 80 vehicles at a time can be parked there. The BLM has considered this issue carefully and determined that construction of the facility is in the best interest of both the thousands of visitors to Sweet Lake Trailhead and the surrounding area, which has been badly fouled by human waste and sanitation products. People have already traveled a distance to get to this trailhead in an area that's very, very little in any way of services, uh, Mushevik says. So you have people camp at the trailhead before taking the trail. As you can imagine, many people can generate a lot of human waste. Still did not say why it jumped from $9,000 to $98,000 when the company is three hours away. I'm listening. BLM crews then have to go out on an area like that and collect waste by hand. It really becomes a sanitation issue. The $98,670 contract does not include the pumping out and maintenance of the facility. Those issues are addressed in a separate contract. And there you go. That is the way a great country falls further and further down the toilet. Friends, Sam I.B. reporting for the uh, Media Speaks. It's his correct views that you are listening to. I'm trying to run as a libertarian for the Ohio House, and to do so, I need signatures. So please meet me 
November 2nd at the Arcadia Grill in downtown Canton. There's going to be a parade. There's going to be a McKinley Maslin game going on. It, it's going to be a party, 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Come on down. We're going to have breakfast together. You cop on the webcam. Start talking away. More, I've got more than welcome, more than enough room for you to sit and chill. I'll probably have some guests popping in and out, too. I'm working on that as we go. Thank you, friends, for listening. Please donate to the show if you can. Every penny that you give me at the correct views of Hotmail.com goes to a better show. And as always, don't forget Dana Mowgli Christ at the Charity Connection. We are going to finish having her beat cancer's ass. Good night, friends. God bless.